OK, let's try adding these two numbers together. Now, a common mental calculation strategy is to split each of these numbers into its tens and units, add the tens, add the units, and then put it all back together again. We can do this on paper as well. 26 partitions into 20 and 6, and we can partition 33 into 30 and a 3. Let's add those bits together. 20 and 30 add together to get 50. 6 and 3 add together to get 9. Add the 50 and the 9 together to get 59. Just as easy on paper as it is mentally. This will work with numbers of all sizes. So we can take 284 and add it to 315. We're still partitioning, but we don't need to show how the numbers split up, just as long as it's happening in our heads. So let's write this out with one number underneath the other. And then we can add the, the hundreds. So 200 and 300 add together to get 500. The tens, 80 and 10 gives us 90. And then the units, 4 and 5 add together to get 9. Add the whole lot together and we get 500. And 99. Let's try another one. Okay, let's try 278 added to 648. Bigger numbers this time, let's see how we get on. 200 and 600 gives us 800. Let's do the tens now. 70 and 40 adds together to get 110. 8 and 8 gives us 16. Can you see how with the tens, we're now that the total gives us hundreds and tens, and with the units, we've, gone, we've got tens and units as an answer? doesn't make it any harder. We've just got to be careful of where we place the numbers. So we can still add them together easily to get 920. Six. Does it matter whether you start by adding the hundreds or the units? Let's do the same calculation again and um, see if it makes any difference. So 278 add 648. This time we're going to start with the units. 8 and 8 give 16. 70 and 40 110, 200 and 600 gives us 800. Add those all together, you get 926, the same answer as we had when we started with the hundreds. So it doesn't actually matter whether you start with the hundreds or the units. Because children have been used to calculating mentally to start with, they'll be more happy with, with starting with the bigger numbers. For the very compact method, they need to start with the smallest numbers involved. So you'll need to move them across gently, initially showing them that it doesn't make any difference whether you start with the hundreds or the units, and then um, giving them more experience with starting with the units. Can you see how this method now relates to the very compact method that you were taught at school? We've just expanded it a little bit so we can see what's going on in the middle.